Let's get now to an eventful Qatar Grand Prix where we saw uh, Lewis Hamilton crash out at the first turn and another win for newly crowned champion Max Verstappen. The conditions made it a really tough race for the drivers with one revealing, if you're having your lunch, just don't listen to this bit, that he was sick in his helmet during the race. Yeah. Right, let's get to uh, Damon Hill uh, live. Hi, Damon. I hope you've had your lunch. Hello. I, um, I, yeah. I, know, I know the question you're going to ask me. <laughs> we'll come on to I, I that. Might, I might have felt a bit queasy a few times, but I never got that far. Yeah, well, that's, that's good to hear. Um, we'll come on to the conditions in a moment. Let's talk about the main man, obviously, Max Verstappen, uh, newly crowned three-time champion. Just sort of give us a picture into the, the pit lane. How do teams try now and, and challenge him and, and dethrone him in the future? They, they've got a tall order um, to, to match or overturn the Red Bull combination with Max Verstappen driving. Uh, they, they've come close to perfection this season, I really have, and uh, they've broken a lot of records that have stood for a long time. I think they're on target, or Max is on target to break a record that Jim Clark set back in the 60s, which is percentage of laps led or race wins in a season. I can't remember which the exact statistic is, but it's it, no, he, he's, he's just basically ticked off loads of records this year and uh, they seem unstoppable. So uh, you would need to achieve perfection to be able to beat them. And for people that are sort of viewing F1 maybe from, from the distance, they don't know about all the, the technicalities of the whole thing, what makes him so good? Um, I, I think there's, there, he's a new breed of driver, or relatively new breed of driver, whereby they started very young. And of course, in, in Max's case, his father was a Formula One driver. So he had a Formula One driver with all his experience, Jost Verstappen, coaching him and, and giving him all the, the right um, direction. And, uh, you know, Michael Schumacher lived in a go-kart track, but his, his dad wasn't a famous Formula One driver. So, uh, but he started very young as well, as did Lewis Hamilton. But Max has come from a very early age being groomed in the right way coached in the right way to understand what is required and he's got the most extraordinary talent uh he's got a good head on his shoulders and he's mature i mean i think he's he cut he's come into formula one age 17 16 17 i think it was before he could even drive a road car and was was volatile and quick um and he's managed to combine that that youth and speed with uh, experience now. And I think he, in the interview he gave on, on the weekend with um, Corinne Chandok, you know, he was, he was very clear that he was admitting that he understands now what the job is better. So he just gets getting better and better all the time. Uh, let's talk about Lewis Hamilton now. Obviously, Max Verstappen sort of moving away from him and, and everyone else, it seems. Uh, didn't go to plan for, for Lewis uh, yesterday. Obviously had that crash on the first corner with his teammate, George Russell. Uh, what do you think he was thinking? Well, they were on, I, I think he shouldn't be so hard on himself. And, 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 and watching Ted's, um, Ted's notebook after the race, he brings up a very good point, which was that uh, the Mercedes were on two different tyre strategies. So, so um, George is on a, on a harder tyre and probably had to or had the opportunity, if you like, of, of sitting back, and uh, Lewis was on the on the softer tire and got a great start, and maybe was a bit impatient to get past and get ahead. But but um, and and George, as you can see, is really in a position where three into two doesn't go. <laughs> he had nowhere to go, and, and Lewis was going around the outside. And I think there was a little bit of a misunderstanding in their strategy, perhaps on reflection. Mercedes will go. Well, maybe we should have got George to to let Lewis go if we if, if we saw him coming up on a good start so um shouldn't be too hard on himself but it's not it's uncharacteristic for for lewis to to make a mistake like that but i guess those those mistakes especially on the on the first turn can happen one thing that shouldn't happen and that's why lewis hamilton was was fine that he crossed the track whilst the the race was live and under the safety car just explain for people who aren't aware how dangerous that that is Yes, it's, it's almost a, a complete no-no, really, because uh, th these cars approach extremely quickly. And uh, he's standing there. It is the first. They've got the safety car going around. You can see the yellow sign on the left saying safety car. So the cars are traveling at a very low speed. And he probably saw an opportunity to get back uh, quickly to the inside of the circuit where he could uh, go and explain to the team what happened. But um, the... the the etiquette really should be to wait on the outside and, and get to a place of safety off the track. So the, the FI will be probably slamming in with a quite a hefty fine, I should think. Um. Yeah, and 
I doubt he will be doing it again. Um, I wanted to talk to you, obviously, about the, the heat. We mentioned uh, about the driver who was sick in his own helmet, and that was Esteban Ocon. Uh, he continued, finished seventh, so maybe it's not that bad a thing to do. Um, <laughs> Williams Logan Sargent, he retired with 16 laps remaining, having also felt sick. I mean, just, just put this into context in terms of the other races yeah. around the year. Was it exceptionally hot? Were the conditions exceptionally different? Yes, very different, very different in, in a couple of respects. One is that the circuit is quite punishing anyway. It's a, it's a full-on circuit. You know, there's a lot of G-loading on the cars and a lot of cornering, high G cornering throughout the, the lap almost. Uh, it was very high humidity and high temperature, um, and they had to race flat out because the they had a problem with the tyres that meant that they couldn't do their usual long stints where they managed the tyre usage, and they were and they were obliged to come in after 18 laps to, to put on a new set, which meant that the pace of the race was much much higher than it would have been normally. So they're they're driving almost flat out uh, throughout the race, and they used to do this in in the old days with uh, refueling, which is why they they stopped it because. Generally, what, what it meant was that people who um, the race result was almost the same as qualifying because the drives were just simply going as fast as they could the whole way through. So the, the whole tyre management thing um, was caught out this this time because they had to do it on safety grounds. Um, they couldn't just run the tyres over these curbs. So there's a, com a combination of factors, but very unpleasant if, it's, if you're in a racing car and you're working very hard. Can you imagine you're going into the gym and they haven't got any air conditioning on in the gym, and you're wearing a, um, a woolly jumper and a balaclava, and then you put a crash helmet on and, and go for a run on one of the running machines. You know, it is it, it really is brutal. Does it have any impact in terms of the, the planning and things like that when, when it's so oppressive for drivers? Do they think, well, hang on a minute, we can't, we can't be racing here, however much money we're, you know, is involved? Yeah, yeah. Um, well, they will be definitely reviewing this and, and asking whether or not they could under certain circumstances, if they can predict it, um, you know, bring in some um, restrictions, maybe shorten the race. I don't know. But, I mean, they should all be really hydrated before the race. Uh, Logan Sargent, I believe, had an illness and he wasn't able to hydrate himself properly anyway. So he, he had to pull out the race. But, yes, to actually predict what will happen physically during the race is very difficult. And, and some people may say, OK, well, you just need to be better prepared. You need to have more water in the car. You need to have a way of cooling the driver. Um, under these conditions, and I'm sure they'll be looking at all sorts of um, alternatives. Formula One, that's what Formula One does, is it finds solutions to problems and uh, engineering solutions particularly. And another thing that happens in Formula One, that drivers have to follow team orders, and that impacted uh, the two McLaren drivers, of course. Uh, Oscar Piastri, they, he finished second, Lando Norris third. Norris seemed a little bit peeved that he wasn't allowed to overtake him. Is that just par for the course, or, or do you think that maybe there should have been different instructions? Uh, no, I think that McLaren were wise to do that, to, to at least try and get their driver to cooperate. They had a fantastic potential result there of a 1-2. And if the two drivers start racing towards the end and they're, they're young, feisty drivers, there's a, there's a good chance that you're going to end up with... Uh, either one car out or two cars out. So um, I think they were, you know, Lando played the game, played the team game and, um, and understood the situation very well. And I think it will uh, stand him in, in good stead. I think they, they've got a fantastic bag of points and now they're closing in on uh, uh, their, their championship contenders in the Constructors' Championship. So, um, yeah, Aston Martin. So I think that they are, um, they did the right thing. It's, it's tough sometimes to be asked to come behind someone if you're a racing driver. Yeah.